Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins on April 29, 1964. We see Richard Kuklinski on his date with Deborah. He mentions working as a dubber on Disney cartoons. Richie is first reluctant to talk about his life, and Deborah is cautious of him, since he doesn't ask any questions and comes out as a boring conversationalist. Deborah's aunt picks her up and drives her home when their date is over. Richie then goes to the pool hall, where he plays with his friends Terry and Dino. When the subject of Deborah comes up, one of his playmates, Earl claims to know her since she has seen his other buddy like a whore. Richie completes the game as he begins to lose his cool. In the end, Earl loses the game. They nearly get into a fight when he picks up the money, but their friends stop them. Later, Earl exits and heads straight to his car. Suddenly, Richie cuts his throat with a knife. In Elmer, New Jersey, on September 14, 1965, Richie was waiting in a hospital because his wife, Deborah had just given birth to their first child, a daughter. After that, he returns to the laboratory, where he creates pornographic films. His friend Roy Lepron informs him that a client has requested the film, but because Richie is exhausted and they are seven boxes short, he will go home to rest first. When he steps outside, a car with three men inside arrives, searching for Dino. Roy DeMeo is the boss, assisted by Josh Rosenthal and Mickey Spicoli. Roy continues to enter the laboratory despite Richie's explanation that Dino is not there. Once inside, they discover no one and begin to hit and threaten Richie. Before they go, Josh instructs Richie to come to the Gemini Lounge the next day. Richie returns home first to care for his daughter, and he learns through the newspaper that Deborah is seeking a larger residence. The next day, Richie goes to the lounge, and the three drive him there. They attempt to terrify Richie by pointing a gun at his face, but he is emotionless. When a beggar begins to knock on their window, Roy decides to put Richie to the test by asking him to step outside and murder the beggar. So he did what he ordered. Roy then hires Richie as his hitman, responsible for collecting money and debts from people and killing them. Richie begins to make a lot of money and can care for his family more. Richie developed as a wealthy man. Ten years later, on May 5, 1975 in Dumont, New Jersey, Richie holds a lavish dinner for his friends Terry and Dino. They bring their spouses and share stories about their lives. One of the women incorrectly says that Richie is making porn instead of cartoons. Deborah, on the other hand, describes his job which is in money exchange. That is why they become wealthy so quickly. Richie hides all of his horrible illegal activities from his wife, and portrays himself as a typical businessman. They arrive home, and are set to complete a delicious dinner. On February 13, 1976, Josh conducts business with two Cubans. He murders them, grabs their money, and then escapes. Richie and Deborah are having sex in their bedroom when their daughter, Betsy knocks on the door because she had a bad dream. They discuss the Vietnam War. Richie sends her to her bedroom to sleep and resumes engaging. The next day, a messenger called Leo appears in the lounge, and speaks with Roy, explaining that the Gambinos know what Josh did to their men. They are now enraged and want to track them down. Leo suggests killing Josh, but Roy refuses since he considers Josh's son. They have a considerable argument, and Roy is stressed. Roy tells him that he will look after Josh and that the Gambinos will not be able to find him and will not do it again. In Kuklinski's home, Annabelle assists his father, Richie, in tying his tie before he sends his children to school and leaves for work. He checks into a motel and finds Marty and a prostitute called Alex in a room together. Marty is filming Alex, and they are about to kiss when Richie comes on the door and locks him in a room. Marty is now on the phone with Roy regarding Josh and all they need to do. When the talk concludes, Richie is going to kill Marty, but he asks him to pray first, which doesn't work, so he shoots and kills him. When Richie is about to go, he discovers someone inside the closet and searches to find out who it is, he takes her out and lets her escape. However, a man named Robert Prong, also known as Freezy, appears and gives them time to leave the building, which they do because he blows it up. Richie follows Freezy inside an ice cream truck, and he is enraged because Richie allows Alex to go, even though she sees his face. They attempt to pursue her but are unsuccessful, because Richie refuses, he claims to have a reputation and does not kill ladies and children. Freezy is furious, and tells Richie that he owes him one. Freezy drives away, leaving Richie alone. The next night, Roy summons Richie to his office, they are set to have dinner, but Roy expresses his anger with Richie since he leaves a witness. He tells Josh what he knows about the Gambinos and how he holds them hostage, for a little while. Roy also states they will take a break since they are being chased, and Richie is retired. Richie left upset since he is now unemployed. The cops call him at home, but he constantly hangs up. 
he unknowingly pays a visit to Treston State Prison, where his elder brother, Joey is imprisoned for raping and murdering a girl. They talk for long because he hasn't visited in 11 years, out of the 12 years Joey has been inside. Joey asks for Richie's help to get a lawyer, but they fight. Joey tells Richie that he is not different, he too will be a prisoner. Joey rants, shouts and swears at Richie for being a worthless brother, as he begins to walk out of prison. Richie and his family head to the skating rink, where he watches his girls play while Deborah speaks to a friend. When they are going to drive home, Richie loses attention and accidentally bumps into the car in front of him. The man from the vehicle rushes outside and confronts him, but when Richie pulls himself out of the car, the guy is scared and returns to his car. They assume everything would be okay, but the man swears to Richie's family, prompting him to be outrageous. He chases the car from street to street, despite his wife and children yelling at him to stop. The chase action ends as a taxi pushes him away. Deborah is enraged with Richie, who apologizes. Richie returns home and takes a shower after the road adventure. He recalls his childhood when he saw his brother violently assaulted by their father. His coldness and emotionlessness were from this. Richie is watching TV in their living room. When Deborah asks him what's wrong, she complains about how he behaves as if he doesn't care. Richie becomes outrageous once again, he loses control and his temper. He tosses everything aside and destroys everything. Deborah apologizes, and Richie clarifies that he is just concerned about his family. The next day, he meets with Freezy and requests help, since he is jobless. They agree to become partners in crime, Richie will perform the labor in a 50 to 50 split, while Freezy is concerned with the details. Also, Freezy shows him the body inside the ice cream truck's freezer, where he freezes it until the right moment comes to dump it somewhere. They begin chopping people's body parts, and then freeze them after Richie kills them. Despite this, Richie can take his family to a fancy restaurant to eat and enjoy themselves. Roy invites his people to the Gemini Lounge, and Leo is there. They got into a fight because Josh murdered the Gambino's boys. Roy shoots Josh, resulting in his death, which he finds difficult to accomplish. That's his only option for silencing the Gambinos. Leo enters a New York cinema and talks to Freezy about killing someone. He promises them 40 grand if they successfully murder the victim and another 10 cash if it seems to be a natural death. Leo left after showing the man the image. Back in the office, Freezy and Richie plan the assassination. Richie will use Freezy's approach, which involves cyanide. It will be his first time. Freezy shows him how to spray the powder at the person, killing him. They must have a more natural death to have 10 more grand. Richie and Freezy then head to the bar. They begin to get along with others dancing. As Freezy stands nearby, Richie gently blows the powder into the man's face, causing him to cough and become unable to breathe. When they're ready to head outside, Terry yells Richie's name and asks for help with a job. Richie leaves Terry there, and the man dies. The next day is Annabelle's 16th birthday, so Richie pens a poem while shaving his beard. The celebration has begun. Someone knocks on their door, and it's Roy's henchman, so Richie walks outside and enters Roy's car. Deborah is staring out the window. When Richie is inside, Roy takes out his gun and aims it at him, he's angry. Richie is working for Leo Marks with Freezy. Richie first denies it. Annabelle walks to the vehicle, and Richie begs Roy and his lads not to hurt her. Roy tells his boys not to harm Annabelle as she knocks on the car window, to ask about Richie, and they allow him to leave. He comes home furious and frustrated. He questions Terry about what he said, but Terry denies everything. His head's veins are bursting. Freezy still phones Richie on Christmas Day, which irritates him since he spoils his holiday. They intend to murder another person. Richie offers Terry over the payphone the job he wants to perform. Terry thanks him, and he goes. In a cemetery, Richie is in Leo's car demanding the 50,000 he promised them, but Leo won't give it to him since Roy understands Leo's plan after murdering his guy. Leo tells Richie he won't be paid if he murders him. When Richie has calmed down and is ready to leave the vehicle, Leo mentions Richie's family, saying they have no idea how horrible their father is. Richie shoots him, killing him. He realizes his mistake and becomes angry. When he leaves Leo's body in the vehicle, Betsy pages him to tell Annabelle was in the hospital from a hit and run. Richie gets to the hospital and discovers his daughter is in critical condition, Deborah is upset with him, and she blames his work. Then he meets Freezy. Freezy and Richie discuss money and the park. Richie becomes enraged and strangles Freezy, believing he will kill him. But before he goes, he ensures that Freezy is dead. Richie returns to the hospital, where he is joined by his closest friend Dino. He explains that Terry was killed and thrown away in the trash. In addition, 
he discusses the famous killer in a village called the Iceman. He moves the body first, so the police wouldn't know how the victim died before dumping it or showing it to the public. Richie enters a restaurant to meet Dominic, a second assassin working for the Lacuzis, where they agree to murder using cyanide. Richie returns home first to care for his sick wife, Deborah. He meets with Dominic to give him the cyanide, and although he intends to make a sandwich, he also attempts to provide part of it to a stray cat. When he puts Deborah in the vehicle, he observes that the kitten is still alive, so he realizes that something is wrong. As Richie starts his car, police cars appear and block the road. They place him under arrest, and take Deborah into custody. Later, he realizes that Dominic is an undercover agent, who was seeking to pursue him. Richie is so huge that it takes five men to control him, and he tries to fight against the police, but is unable to. Actual news indicates that the legendary killer has been captured. His family, including his wife and kids, are still at the court hearing for his case. Old Richie is asked whether he is sorry for anything he has done, but he replies that he is not. He feels sorry for the one thing, that is harming his family, the people he cares about the most. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel.